Stand by. Okay, finish typing and roll over. Channeling new stuff. Last minute new. Search it, search it, find something. There you go. Now go back. Excellent. You can do it one more time. Where's Sam? Okay, I'm ready whenever you are. Okay. Cool. Yeah, something to correct there that you need to type? Yeah, I can just, I'm just going to take this line out so I can do it okay, word by word. Okay, finish the sentence, then roll over there. Okay. Okay, we're rolling. Go ahead. Wishes for a happy birthday from the KCBA Kids Club, John, Vincent, Aaron, Courtney, Timothy, Blaine, Carrie, Joshua, Armando, Tony, Tiffany, Lorena, Lindsay, Luis, Martina, Mitchell, Jeffrey, Jan, Steve, Rachel, Carolina, Betty, and Gretchen. Happy birthday from the Kids Club. This box. It's not a box. It's a club. You mean a golf club? No, the Crafties and Macaroni Club. You can get all kinds of neat stuff like, whoa. Wrong door. Like a painter's cap and egg low shoelaces. And there's a club game book with more neat stuff. Yeah, and fix that door. You can send in $2.95 and three proofs of purchase. Details on boxes. Scrap macaroni and cheese. It's not just a box. It's a club. Isn't this romantic? Uncle Scrooge and Company have a special message just for you. Surprise! All the DuckTales fun and excitement is even better when you share it with a friend. Ooh, this I like. So take it from your DuckTales pals, both old and new. I won't let you down. They've got good times and plenty of adventure waiting just for you. We're inseparable on Disney's DuckTales. Tomorrow at 3.30 on the KCBA Kids Club. California's most wanted. Baby face green wanted for solicitation of laughs. Pretty girl Warner for unlawful practices of vanity. Scar face Paul Jack for hot wiring motorcycles. Big Mama Garrett for constantly offering unsolicited advice. And wire mouth Ramsey for gross acts of just plain silliness. All were last seen carrying out their various acts of crime. Weeknights at 5 on KCBA Fox 35. No need to call if you see them. Just be warned. You may laugh yourself silly. The, the specific things aren't the important thing, I think. You don't see any blood or anything. <laughs> I mean, they come across as a little cliche. Business is incredible in this one. 
Yeah, we'll be guy. Yeah. Okay. Basically, right. the more right. information we're written. And all along this trough, it continues all the way from this wall. You mean over the edge of the top of this yeah, wall? Yeah, we don't have that much room there. Okay, wait. Um, you mean as if we were going to take this craft all the way up and over? Yeah. Or does it I start from here and then go down? Because it seems more nat natural that it spreads out That's somewhat cool. in this direction. I mean, maybe it does go all the way maybe it should. through, even, yeah. like, to the water. That would be cool. I wasn't even thinking of that. I was thinking it would just kind of stop the, where the knife begins. The elevation here. Okay. This is what is called here the cool area. This forest is going to be kind of dark and um, kind of a coolish, um, although this is the most prominent area where that, that begins because it's such a long stretch before you get to mm. this tree. Serious burden. <coughs> the transportation. This continues to slips down and you're going <laughs> to, oh, it's just cool. going to be That's been gamma increased. There are more men headed to our house. Meet VA Mail 69 2005. He's the one who said there's just something about a teen body. He's 28 and thinks he's talking to a 14 year old. He's actually chatting with this 23 year old from Perverted Justice. All right, a minute. A minute, a minute, a minute, a minute. We're back. We back. We back. A million kind of ways we back. Back to the glorious underwater. World of Mario. Why is. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. wait. So Cappy is in the, the visor? His Google eyes were showing up. I was watching that. Sorry. Yeah. The Cappy eyes cover Mario's eyes. Alright, sure. Call is really worked up about the Challenger today. I'm doing some squats, stretch it out, get limbered up. Did I not change the game? Yeah, so. So, sorry guys, turns out, turns out I have two-factor authentication on my, uh, Uplay account, and, uh, it was on a previous phone. So, also apparently I didn't save the recovery code, so now I have to call, uh, Uplay support and try and figure out how to, uh, how to get my account back. So that's cool. Uh, we'll see... But yeah, it turns out that even though I delayed, I delayed uh, switching games to play Assassin's Creed, that I also still can't play Assassin's Creed. In other words, it turns out you play as a massive bitch. Well, no, I mean this is this is mostly this is entirely my doing. I put two two factor on it. I didn't save the code. I changed phones without thinking about it. So I had similar I had similar issues with uh, Battle.net back in the day. So it's it's a bummer because the call them on stream no they're their hours they're not open right now I looked it's Monday through Monday through Friday so I'm not to wait till Monday 
They have no problem with you buying it without authenticating it, but God forbid you try to play it. So, that's that's when it gets weird, right? I got it on Steam, and when you play a Uplay game on Steam, it just transfers you to Uplay, and then you you uh, redeem the, the key to your account. So, can't do that. I'm okay waiting, man. I'm okay waiting. I cannot wait for Uplay Call to go poorly and end up being a story on Dude Soup. Yeah, people have said that you place customer service is not the best. I mean, for me, all they have to do is verify my identity to remove 2FA, right? So I don't know what... It sounds like a lot of people have a lot of negative experiences, so yes, I'll, I'll, I'll learn what that means soon enough. First, I'm going to get these coins. So it appears as though there's another moon symbol somewhere in this area, and I think it's local to this area. No? Okay, so it's it's around here too then. Uh, we'll see what we gotta do then. Already got those. Reminds me of when I buy games on Steam and still being subjected to games for Windows Live. Yeah, yeah, that's that's not the best. Uh I mean, the one thing I'll say is that actually, uh play anywhere is a pretty cool feature. I actually enjoy it so far, the games that are playing anywhere anyway. What is this blasphemous higher than 100 coin counter? Oh, I've already been in here. Yeah, I did this last night. I kind of like this system, basically. Coins are the are the rolling currency that you get that you spend on clothes and stuff like that. Collectibles. Deaths just cost you 10 coins. They figured out a way to, like, figure out how to make death slightly meaningful, but not really. To abandon the like punishment aspect of the game, to reward exploration and experimentation. Like if if deaths were truly punishing, you wouldn't try jumping into stuff. You wouldn't do any of that. So I, I prefer it this way. I think it's actually a pretty good system. Am I girlfriend worthy? Come on, Kala. I'm assuming you're talking to me whenever you say anything. So I think I would be the best girlfriend. Yeah. What? What are, you, what are you crying about? You were so excited to have a fish. Oh. Can you be the whale? You mean the little Nessie thing? I don't think so. My significant other and I played it there's a level for at least a couple of hours, so it felt like we exhausted all the available moons, then we checked the list and we had 49 out of 69. We missed 20. Yes, Goad. There are... It is, it is pretty impressive. Uh, the breadth of this game, the exploration that it affords. It's gonna drive me slightly mad if I can't find that last moon piece, though. So, let's see here. Okay, it appears when you're in this area... I need my moon. I'm gonna get my moon. The thing that I have yet to figure out is if this game will put you in areas that have moons you can't possibly acquire yet. Because you don't have the appropriate skills or whatever. Let me try okay, so the thing goes away if I go here. Let's go back. I'm a boy, but can I still be girlfriend worthy? You can. We can all be girlfriend worthy if we try. If we look inside of ourselves. If we think we truly may be waifu material. Okay, well, the little indicator went away. Yeah, you really have to be underwater. Okay. So it's got to be down here somewhere. Luigi has foreskin. Yeah, he does. Damn. That's hoping that would be it. Face when you're not a cute anime girl. Speak for yourself, bro. I'm as kawaii as it gets. Dog. Huh. So yeah, it seems that the rules of Mario Odyssey are if a creature is wearing a hat and you can't knock the hat off, then you, can pos you can't possess it. But then that does mean that the metagame is kind of figuring out how to knock the hats off of things so that you can throw your hat onto them. How does Mario sink with that ring around him? Because he's fat! Uh, I don't know. Actually, fatness should prevent him from sinking. There it is! I found it! I'm a hero! 
Give me my moon. Possess, sorry, capture. My word is capture. Look at how nefarious those kelp are. Their little domino masks. Kickflips. I have no dick opinions, only dick facts. Thank you for signing up for dick facts. Give me my moon! My moon! So, moons first appeared in Super Mario World, right? It was the 3-up symbol, as I recall. Jeff Fahey's character in Long Lawnmower Man with a weak prep versus Thanos with Infinity Gauntlet. Are they fighting in the cyber plane? Or are they fighting in re real life? Because he was pretty ripped up. He could he could mow a lawn shirtless like the best of them. Alright. Let me, let me get up there and beat this, uh, what are they called? Moo bunnies or something? I don't remember. The wedding planners. I'll post Mario's dick. That's a dick fact. Mario's dick is now a dick fact. Jacob. Thank you for signing up for Dick Facts. Don't subscribe from Dick Facts. Please reply with cock block. You have now signed up for two Dick Facts a day. If you'd like to upgrade your account, please reply with cock block. Damn. How do you do the dive in the air? Is it There it is, okay. That's right, okay, so let's let's fucking try and style on this jump a little bit. I'm gonna try some pro Mario shit. Alright, here we go. I'm gonna throw the shit, I'm gonna long jump on it, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna do a dive. So hold on. There we go. Long jump. Dive! Err! Still not enough. Alright. Anyone ever have a catheter? No anime Buddha? I haven't. Let me spin you a tail. I've had one, and that's a fact. Is that a dick fact? Sounds like a dick fact. Yeah, young, I tried for the style points. It didn't didn't amount to much. I knew a guy who got circumcised as an adult and hurt him a lot. Yeah, I can imagine. I am eternally grateful that shit got tidied away before I was old enough to understand. Old enough to feel. How the fuck do you get up there? Hmm. Maybe I need to go around there again? Having an any dick is nothing to be ashamed of? You mean, that's just a vagina, bro. You were describing a vagina. And yes, you're right. It is, it is nothing to be ashamed of. Whoop! Having a vagina is beautiful. Oh, that's right. I've seen a video on circumcision and it looks super simple. It is pretty simple. You're basically grooming livestock. Damn it. Get out of here, Goombas! That goes back to the beginning. I love the sound of them all chomp, like, marching after you. What's up, Irvine? Cheering out bits to celebrate foreskin. Does anyone else have strong political opinions or thoughts about the current state of economic affairs? I may have the boy of your dreams. Wait, what? Are you saying that if, if I were to have strong opinions, that you would have the perfect gentleman for me? So, let's see. That pipe doesn't seem to go anywhere. How do you get up there? Oh! Looks like maybe I can go up through the central column of that building? Maybe. Circumcision vid was on an adult guy, but it looked like a cork remover. Yeah, they kind of have... They've got a whole system worked out. For uh, crimping, crimping and cinching off that bit of useless skin. So let's see. It does kind of seem like... Can I swim up through this? It does look like it's kind of a, a hallway of water. Let's see. Oh, hell! Hold! Hell! Uh. It doesn't appear to go down that far, though. Yeah, it just kind of hits the ceiling and stops. Well, that's a that's disappointing. Disappointed. Hold on, let me let me go out and swim up again. 
More dick facts? Uh, I don't know that I have too many more. You know how a mason jar screws on? It's like that, then they take a knife and cut off the skin. Yeah, well, yeah, they, they basically tourniquet it so there's no blood flowing to the area. Then they just chop it off and then they lock it all up. And get up to the roof of that shaft. Oh, uh, okay, here we go. Motherfucking P-Block. Damn it. Damn it, Mario. Damn it, Mario. You see all the coins we lost because you're a fucking bitch? Then they put tape around your PP? Yeah. Gotta let it heal all heal together. You need an aesthetically pleasing tip. Well, alright. That's progress, motherfucker. I love that sound. I'll never not love that sound. What does this P switch do? Uh. Oh. Okay. Oh, it's like a shortcut to get back. Awesome. Why does Mario have floaties on if they don't make him float? Doesn't need him. Booyah! Moon! Motherfucking moon time! I think a joke about Mueller. Typical funhouse fucking politics. I think we do a pretty good job of keeping things light. I was partially circumcised and the job wasn't finished until I was 10. Ooh. Hospital with the kids with broken arms and a myriad of other childhood elements in me having to say, I got my PP whacked. Someone hit dick. Whoa. All right. It's sort of weird for us humans to see a baby boy and one of the first things that must be done for the new baby boy is getting the knife. Ah. Uh, but that is a comedic reduction of, of what it actually is, but yeah, you're right. It's weird. Humanity's weird. Won't, won't argue with you about that. Man, one of my favorite internet.png things is the dude... There's some dude who went off about how Silent Hill is all a giant allegory for circumcision. And how Konami needs to, like, pay for their sins in advancing this terrible, like, male genital mutilation thing going on. What happens if you let the skin hang on by a little bit? Yeah, it might be a, might be a fun party favor. I'm sure it'd be an interesting sensation if you had like a little... It's kind of like if you're walking in carrying a grocery bag. It'd be like that, but with dicks and vaginas. On one hand, foreskin got that aesthetic. On the other hand, it's a hindrance when you put your dick in a cage. A cage. Interesting. I don't know if this is bias speaking, but... I feel like a circumcised wang is a, a little more visually appealing. Than, uh, than one with a little, a little turtleneck on. Not that either, not that either are, not that either have delightful, uh, delightful proportions, but. Oh, a triple. I have to get circumcised at some point. I'm going to keep it and have it grafted into a wallet cover. Hmm. That sounds appropriate. When I was when I was a child, uh, let's see here. Circumcision was considered necessary for health purposes. Yeah, I mean, I believe that dudes dudes can clean themselves, but I've also perceived I have been in the room with so many dudes that just buzz right out of the bathroom after taking a piss, and they don't wash their hands. So it's not impossible for a, a dude with an uncircumcised dick to clean himself. But I have seen so many dudes not do the simplest basic hygiene tasks that I feel like maybe it is for the best that you don't have a flap of skin that piss and dead skin and cum can collect in. <laughs> Society's conditioned you to think that way. I broke conditioning by looking at thousands of uncircumcised dick on Google Images. Doing like a clockwork orange kind of shit. I wish my dick all the time. Good. Good job, Jacob. I wash my hands before. <laughs> Can't be touching my meat with nasty hands. Piss and cum don't collect in it. 
A lot of things collect in it. I was just throwing out things. That's a hat. What? I don't understand. Ow! I legitimately never looked up what an uncircumcised penis was. I just assumed that I wasn't circumcised all the way until I was 19. Yeah, I didn't really, I didn't really know there was a difference until I got the internet and saw some porn for the first time. Uh, okay, I get it. Oh! What a, what an awesome way to like physically telegraph what you're supposed to do. How he like has his hand over his eyes and he's looking around, like he can't see above him. Man. This game's really good about visually telegraphing what you're supposed to do. Oh! Tricks! You fancy! this you can't dock without foreskin that's very true you can't and as we all know docking is the most important sexual maneuver that a man can do it'd be fun to get Gavin to go through his routine of cleaning his dick considering he's really talking about cleaning his butt by karate chopping it I don't necessarily need Gavin to tell me in detail how he cleans his genitalia But if he has a unique technique, who knows? It might be fun to hear. I feel like every every person has own, their quirks, you know? Because you are only ever in the shower by yourself. Unless you, like, get kinky with a significant other. But everyone has, in a vacuum, developed their own cleaning rituals. So I feel like there's a lot of, like, human, human oddity you can find by the order and manner in which humans shower or clean themselves you could dock with a girl well yeah i mean girls dock by like sh shifting their boobs and then smashing them together like tetris pieces on the next dude soup you can go over the technical importance of the docking procedure during intercourse which of course would take upwards of half the podcast yeah pretty much gavin karate chops his ass and curb stomps his dick to clean it that's pretty metal so where do you see... What's the button you hit to see the, like, list of moons in an area? I don't know. My high school banned docking, not in the sexual way, because kids would put a water Gatorade bottle tip onto another bottle tip? What? So, like, to, to clean it up, you'd have to spill one of them? That's kind of the idea? Boob Tetris? You know it. Nope. I should just stream Picross. I think I might. I wanted to do like a, a Switch roundup because I bought a bunch of a bunch of shitty Switch games and I wanted to kind of play them all. Never did it. Never had time. Well, I guess I'm done with this level. I feel like I feel like there's a lot I missed, but that's always the case. Is there a button to list moons? I thought so. Maybe it's on the boat. Minus shows the map. I swear that there's like a list of moons. Oh, whatever. How many hours have I put in the game? I'm not sure. I'm gonna say maybe five? Maybe four to five? I'm still pretty early on. Or rather, I feel like I am. I'm supposed to emulate dick docking, but with bottles. I'm not sure how to phrase it. You did a pretty, pretty good job. The list is in the map. Okay, I thought so. I don't know why I was just missing... Couldn't see it. Oh, okay, well, there's this. Maybe, okay, maybe maybe it was from here. So, yeah. Look at all the moons I didn't get. Look at all the things I haven't captured. Uh, all the souvenirs I don't have. 
does circumcision actually make the PP more sensitive? Um, Kala, my understanding is it makes it less. So, like, think about it like this. A circ an uncircumcised dick has a a bit of skin covering part of part of the penis head, whatever. So it's basically not receiving stimulation. And if, when you pull the skin back, then it's like skin that hasn't been touched in a long time is now receiving a lot of stimulation. A circumcised penis is doesn't have that barrier there, so that that piece of skin is constantly being exposed to rubbing from clothing or otherwise. So it is less or it is less uh, less sensitive. But that's theoretically a good thing if it comes to like intercourse, because a less sensitive dick means a dude will last longer in bed. Yeah. So if you're circumcised, you could hypothetically last longer in bed. That is that is the accepted thinking. I don't know if it's true, and it certainly has never been, or to my knowledge, has not been medically tested. Because you can't really do an A-B test in that regard, you know? You can't have one person... You can't have a... Maybe if you had twins, and one was circumcised, and one was not sleeping with the same woman at the same time, with the same level of stimulation. Like, there's no way to, to have a control group there. Nah. There is... there. <laughs> Who's eating ass? We're all eating ass! It's 2017! Jesus. Anyway, the, uh... I'm gonna tell you, the goal, the goal is to get just drunk enough. To where... You can... There, there is like a marathon pace you can hit. And it's marvelous. Or you have a guy with foreskin have sex, then cut it, then have sex. But, yeah, that's close. You'd have to do, like, 20 intercourses with foreskin, have him get circumcised, and then 20 intercourses with the same woman and the same level of stimulation and, like, the same daily routine leading up to that and all that stuff. I'm permaflaccid when I drink. Oh, that sucks, forceful. There, there is... It's kind of like the, you know, Apollo reading Earth's atmosphere. There is a narrow range you can hit with alcohol. Where you can still... You can still fully bone out, but... It's, like, kind of numbed, so... But you still feel stuff, but you don't feel so much that it ends quickly or ends at any point. My water tastes like ass? Does that count? Yes! Do you have, like, that mildewy water taste? I hate that. Maybe I just drink too much? Yeah, it is possible to get beyond that level. Fun fact, there's a Hep A outbreak in California right now. My doctor gave me an immunization because my immune system has been compromised recently. I was listing risk factors. It said it's also been spread by tongue to anus contact. Then stared me down for a solid 10 seconds of silence before continuing. If you eat NAS a lot, you might get that Hep. Rimming ass. Going all the way until midnight? I need support. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's not midnight yet, huh? Are these enemies, or...? Nope. Okay. They are sentient and local watering cans. That are in a state of panic. Ah. Bowser has stolen flowers for his wedding. Mojo, thank you for the uh, thank you for the prime sub. Kickflips has no ass to eat. That's a bummer. We're all just lonely, lonely mouths looking for an ass. Oh, I'm aware. Spend money. Ooh, well, I don't have any of those yet. Oh, okay, gotta talk to the other person. Oh, whoop, sorry. I wanna know what jaunty clothing I can buy here. My, uh... What? Mechanic. I mean, I'll get it. Of course I'll get it, but... Thank you, Mojo. All just hydrogen atoms that form mouths looking for other hydrogen atoms that form asses. Yes... It's somewhat beautiful if you think about it. I guess I'll, I'll become a mechanic in this world, why not? 
Switcher 1X, and why would I not be able to afford any of them? Lucky if you already have an Xbox, I would say a Switch over a 1X, but... Oh, shit, I didn't put on the mechanic hat. Hold on. Is there a... How did I not... I'm stupid. Too tossed up about ass. Hold on. Damn it. Is there a... Oh, shut up. You can buy a moon there. Yeah, I need to buy those moons. There's no reason not to. What? Is there not a... Damn it. I want to put on that hat! I guess I can just go back on the... Back on the ship. Played anything of Wolfenstein or Assassin's Creed yet? That's interesting ass, Glow. Yeah, I was just playing uh, Wolfenstein. I've, I've played... I've played through the first four hours or so on PlayStation. And the first two hours on PC. I'm starting over on PC. Uh, and then as far as Assassin's Creed... I I have it on PC, but I can't log into my account because I have two-factor authentication on it and I don't have the recovery code. So, kind of fucked myself. Uh, gonna have to call Ubisoft support. There it is. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Alright, I accept this. I had a fat roller moved, 16 pounds on my belly button gone. Wow. Interesting. I've I've wondered about that. Because I've dieted and dieted, and I've gotten to a certain point, but I wonder if I've gotten to the point that I just can't lose anymore, or I'm basically going to have to crash diet or starve myself to get rid of the rest of it. Get back here, bunny. Yeah! Mario is the most sexless being on this planet, yeah. That's what I'm saying, Kickflips. He's he's the ultimate nice guy. He always tries real hard. He's real nice. He doesn't ever, like... I don't know. He doesn't ever make a move. Like, Peach has had two glasses of wine, and she's, like, getting real rubby. Like, she's all up on him. She's, like, leaning in. She's, she's squeezing those elbows together, and Mario's still just like, Hey, you want to go look for some coins? Let's go find a magic moon! And Peach is like, God damn it. And then she gets quote unquote kidnap kidnapped by Bowser. Mario rescues her. She's like, Great, Mario. Thanks, bud. Thanks for that. I guess we'll just hang out. We'll just hang out and talk about Koopas and plumbing. <laughs> He's got that ass eating mustache. He goes home and cries. I mean, I don't know, we've all seen Mario's dick at this point. He's got an eight-year-old's dick. He's got a little, like... I bet when he pisses at a urinal, he drops his underwear and his pants around his ankles. So he's just sitting there with his, his little his little wee-wee. Oh, another riddle. Flowers. Booyah. I don't know what an eight-year-old dick is. Look at the picture! That's what he's got. He's got the little acorn. Oh, I know all about the backwards under. No drips in his undies? Maybe some. I imagine Mario's also a sprayer. He gets stuck up. Who needs a big wee-wee when Mario's nose looks like that? Yeah. I mean, he could, he could probably toss a salad pretty well, but he... Like, he wouldn't understand what it is. He would do it, but he's just like, I'm just doing this because Peach wants me to. But he doesn't, like, he doesn't really get into it because he doesn't understand. Ow. Okay, so any amount of purple. This fucking music, though. You hear these drum breaks? Alright. This is some groovy-ass shit. Use his nose as a butt plug. So I don't know. My knowledge of butt plugs got revolutionized. I did not understand the utility of butt plugs until a gay man explained it to me. He very helpfully told me that butt plugs are not 
they're a means to an end. They are not an end. And pun intended, by the way, on end. Uh, he told me that butt plugs are just there to, like, prepare. It's kind of a pre-stretch. If you get used to having a butt plug in, then once it comes down to some real real anal hours that you like everything's all kind of already opened up and then you can enjoy it a lot more i was like oh shit that makes a lot of sense so it's like a low profile thing you just pop in and you let it do its magic throughout the day and then when it's like nine o'clock you have that you have those two glasses of red wine and you're ready to go <laughs> falafel supreme an acetizer Mmm, delicious. Why do they vibrate? I don't know. Get the juices flowing. Listen, I didn't say I was an expert on, on butt plugs. Merely that I had learned one thing about them that I didn't know before. Oh my gosh, it's like a Rolo. Oh, it's a flower pot, okay. An evil flo- oh! Alright. Bleah. Bleah. Okay. on this Reddit thing. <laughs> nice. Okay. Ah! Hey! Ass! That's what happens. You need to buy butt plugs in packs that include plugs in a range of sizes and switch them up every day or so. Ah, so it's kind of like wearing, uh... Braces or something? Or gauges in your ears? Yeah, you tell him, Kala. Having stuff in your ass isn't bad. So much for the tolerant left. Cool. I don't know. I'm still I'm still very vanilla in those regards. You get a starter back for 14 bucks on Amazon. Good way to get in the game. $14 isn't that bad. Ass play isn't dead? No, it's it's more it's hipper than ever. What are you talking about? Millennials love ass. And the eating thereof. He's like the new donut, blo donut blocks. Why would you deny your body the fun of the prostate? That's a fair point. The idea of anything coming close to my anus freaks me out. Incredibly, it's almost a phobia of mine. Sometimes I wonder. Sometimes I'll, re I'll read like a really, a really fucking... A sweet, a sweet blog post from some dude on the internet who's like, "Man, bitches, bitches are just dumb, man. All they want, they're just sluts, man. All they want to do is just dress like sluts and be sluts, and they're just there, like tempting me and all that." I'm like, "Man, I wonder how you'd react if you were making out with a girl and she just reached around and shoved a pinky in your asshole. Like, how would you react?" I know you have opinions on this, this like cosplayer who's got big old boobs and is cosplaying a, like an anime girl you like and you're you're like all oh, been out of shape you can't have sex with her or that you're alone or whatever but if you did like let's just say you did this hot diva cosplayer that you you're just so salty at right now what if you did and she just yeah just slipped a pinky in there my girl got pink eye from my ass nice nice empty there are some things i feel like with most relationships, it's like, okay, we're we're a couple now. And when... <laughs> when you get some kind of, like, very identifiable skin discoloring from something you... like a, a sexual thing you guys have done together. That's one of those, yeah, we're, we're a couple moments. We're a team. Ugh, there we go. It's almost to the point where it's expected. It blew my mind that it was looked down on going... going down on a girl back in the day. Oh, yeah, no, fuck that, man.
I don't know. I just recently... It's fundamentally profile, even though I'm, I'm not good at it. I'm sure this is all theater of the mind stuff. I would never think that I can sum up a person's entire mental state from a... from a thread, but... It is fun to read threads on the internet of, of dudes just getting bitter and... and salty towards attractive... pictures of attractive women, because it... It happens. Oh, this is another... Sky Garden. Alright. Oh, when your significant other has to go to the ER because she... Because an exceptionally bad UTI. Ooh. I've been around the UTI game. It happens. I think... I think the... I mean, more than anything else, the... Sometimes the worst part of it is just... Being reminded that... You're... Ah... That you're a... You're a physical thing in a physical world that's, like, grimy and gross and... Ow, shit. Okay, so you can't jump on them, All right. Okay, so you can throw Cappy in, into the plants. Keeps it. Keeps there. Good, I needed that. I, think, I do think it is pretty cool that the hearts only give you one health. Morgan Farts, you going to sleep? Cool. Thanks for watching. And also Resonator, thanks for watching. Got work tomorrow? Alright. Do your best. Welcome, Black Maple. Welcome to the stream. And yeah, Cauliflower is correct. There are no girls in chat. This is Twitch. And this is video games, therefore there are no girls. Ran out of books on my Amazon shopping list. Do you have any authors I should check out? Uh, I'm not necessarily an authority on uh, literature. Um, what is it? King Killer Chronicles is really good. Um, if you haven't want, if you haven't read that yet, how much peen was in here and got scared? Scared peen might be my favorite thing. It is such a weird like, such a weird uh, routine, but it is so so common. Dude's being like, yeah, chicks, 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 and reflect chicks, chicks, chicks. And then the second that the opportunity is there, to kind of like freak out. Uh, whatever, chick, whatever, you're too aggressive. With the pinky in the butthole. Mario was my favorite anime. Damn it, all the piranha plants came back. It's the worst problem I have to deal with. This music is really good. You're getting a colonoscopy on Halloween, so I hope to make it spooky. I have like Vincent Price laughing. There's a CD of like bats screeching and stuff. Dogs howling. The spookiest colonoscopy. This music though. It's so unexpected. Aye. Mario games do always have great music, though. Just this swinging guitar is not what I thought. Have you had a nice guy phase slash moment? I mean, yes. Yes, um... I... I was in... I was in that... That mode of thinking... Before it was... It was so common to have a term. Um, but yeah. No, that was... When I was like, uh, I want to say, ages, ages 16 to 20, 24, I was a very nice guy. 
I was, and I, and by that I mean I wasn't like a nice person. I just thought I was. And as I get older, I realize where all that shit came from. How like, how much, how much I assumed the rules about dating from the media I consumed. It's it's weird how powerful that is as an instruction mechanic. As somebody who didn't actually date anyone, as someone who didn't actually socialize with anyone, I took my social cues from media. And it wasn't just anime, it was all things. And in most, like, yeah, women only date assholes, not a real gentleman like me. I mean, th that's, that's the perception. So when, like, movies and TV shows tell you that all you have to do is not be the worst human being and you'll get a good girl, I wasn't the worst human being, but I wasn't a good person. Not yet, anyway. Uh... I was good in a self-serving way, but uh, it was a very nice guy syndrome sort of thing, like, well, I didn't sexually harass anyone, therefore I'm owed a a loyal, loving woman who will, like, be my, be my domestic goddess and sex-on-demand provider, all that shit. That stuff was totally there. It's just, it... it it was an interesting process to go through realizing that the rules that had been implied to me through media were bullshit. And then instead I had to come up with my own rules that made more sense just in terms of human interactions. Uh, yeah, Kala, the, that phrase, domestic goddess, it was something that, like, I read in reference to, like, the anime archetype of the, the basically, like, the mom surrogate who, like, will cook and clean for you. Someone who will speak in hushed tones and always make sure that you have rice and fish to eat. I think that's normally can't be a normal human until you've lived as a vaguely normal human enough to learn what the hell it is. So most people take influence from TV or whatever. Yeah, Mr. Noob, you're absolutely correct. Absolutely, I, it's, I think it's a unavoidable step in the process. And that's why that, that's why that people say that representation in media is so important. So, Imagine me, like, complaining about how hard it was for me to socially adjust having white male media to to uh, to reference, and I guess this is what toxic masculinity amounts to, is that I had I had certain uh, examples set that basically said, as long as you don't rape anyone, you're a nice guy, um, and I didn't. <laughs> but even still, that's why it was confusing to me being fed on narratives that was like, all you have to do is not abuse a woman to be the nice guy. And then the girl will end up with you. The girl. You know, the like, plucky, feathered hair, uh, intellectual and precocious, but like, kind of sexual but not quite girl. Like, you're, you're, the narratives all said you're owed one of those by the time the movie's over. And that was just the logic I was reared on. And it took me a long time to, to realize that I was governing, or being governed by that media? By those assumptions? Holy shit, look at this. A flower road. Anyway, it took me a long time to realize that that was essentially what I was operating under, those rule sets. And then to realize all of the things that, yeah, mercy, basically. The perfect Japanese submissive waifu. <laughs> yeah. The mom surrogate, basically. She wakes you up with a cheerful voice by squeezing her boobs on your face and then gives you food and then jacks you off, yeah. And then lets you play video games all day. And just sits there, smiling and bowing. No, I... Man, bridges to nowhere, huh? I realize now that I had a number of female friends that tried their hardest to gently guide me away from that. And their guidance did work eventually. And they were... It's its so weird in reverse to... to realize just how tactful and delicate they were trying to be. Because until a certain age, if they had called me out on it directly, if they had said, yo, you're doing this and it's shitty, I would have been extremely defensive. Um, like, what do you mean? No, I'm not. My whole shit. So, it makes me appreciate that stuff even more in retrospect. Um, and eventually, it eventually broke through. And I'm very grateful for that. Very grateful that I 
I had friends that tried their hardest and oh that's interesting. Sweet. And were willing to give me honest feedback when I needed it in the way that I needed it. That's a that is a bit of a uh surely you can't break all of them, right? Okay, I didn't think so. That is still a um, a skill that I have yet to refine. Having the human empathy to communicate with people and tell them what I'm trying to tell them in the way that they should hear it? Yeah. Fucking moons, yo! Why do girls' calendars have buttholes all over? Because they only date assholes. Ah! You know, it's funny. I was just I was just thinking about that the other day. That, like, oh, girls only date assholes. Meh. That whole thing. And it's funny how a lot of former nice guys in chat... There's a lot of former nice guys on the internet. A lot of current nice guys. That's just how it is. I don't know. It. It's funny how, like... I think, like, surely confidence is attractive. And that shouldn't be a damn mystery, because men are attracted to confidence, too. But guys, when guys see that happening, there's like, it's a two-step. One, they don't perceive themselves as having no confidence, even though that's usually true. And two, they don't perceive the asshole factor as just being interpreted as confidence. And th I guess there's a three to it as well. They don't acknowledge that the asshole dude may actually be a cool dude. He's just confident, and he has what you want, therefore you interpret him as being an asshole. So it's like, you, you've you consumed all these narratives that say, if, the girl, if a girl you want is with somebody else, that is a bad guy. Because all the narratives work out that way. It's the nice dude, and then the asshole who's dating the girl, and eventually she realizes he's an asshole, and goes with the nice guy. Because he, like, he does something atrocious. He, like, beats her, or he sexually abuses her, or something like that. So that, again, the, the messaging is, all you have to do is not sexually abuse anyone, and the girl will eventually figure out you're the nice guy. It doesn't work that way. It takes more than that. I probably had that belief system for a while at some point, but it was overwhelmed by an enormous inferiority complex. There's a reason those two things are connected. Uh, I think you become you become a great partner when you figure out yourself enough to be a good partner for someone. And I think a lot of dudes. Ow! Do I have to like get him when he's inhaling? Throw the throw the hat. I think a lot of dudes, rather than... Ow. He's bigger than he was. Wow, okay. I think a lot of dudes would rather... rather attack... I mean, this is just a human nature thing, actually. A lot of people would rather find fault without than within. And I think part of that is, why do girls just date assholes instead of dating me? Oh. Okay, he sprays more. Already, it's it's way easier to blame the assholes that girls date than it is to look inward and say, what is it about me that makes me not an attractive partner? My lack of confidence, my poor grooming habits, my bad physique, the fact that I don't talk any about anything else but fucking video games. None of this stuff really makes it all the way in the decision process because those are... Those are hard and uncomfortable things to think about. Aw, oh, flips, you got internet outage. I'm not like the other girls, is the girl version of nice guys? Yeah, really? So, I'm, I'm so fascinated by this, because I don't know the girl version of having nice guys. Stephanie's told me a little bit about it. That, like, the girl version of having a nice guy is that you, you crave... You crave emotional fulfillment so much that you make yourself available to, to dudes that take advantage of you. That, like, when they get lonely, they call you up. And you think that if you just make yourself available to them, they'll eventually figure out that you were you were the good one. Like, you were there for them when they needed you. And they'll eventually give up on everyone else and decide that they want to devote themselves to you. 
So in that way, that way, like, women get perpetually taken advantage of, and they feel like if they invest the time, which is to say if they just make themselves available enough, that the dude will eventually come around and realize that, oh, no, wait, this person's good for me all along. What the fuck? I got a jet flower on the back of my head. There's got to be a reason you do that, right? So, yeah, that... I, that's just sad. I mean, it's all sad. These are th these are all like they're sad because they're uh It's all loneliness. I had a I'm not like the other girls phase because I went on meme base too much in 20 2008. Then I got over it. Is the I'm not like the other girls thing and like I'm special, I'm into unique things. Why don't guys recognize this about me? Cuz got yeah. I mean, I'd, I certainly told myself myself that a few times. It's like the one power-up in Super Mario Sunshine. Oh yeah, the one that makes your uh, jetpack blow up. Currently in a phase of learning how to not get stuck in my own head and get too neurotic about how I want to be perceived by the public, which sucks because I'm aware of my over-awareness and it just gets more infuri infuriatingly meta from there. I'm sure I'll get it eventually, but it's kind of hellish right now. Mr. Noob, I get it. The, yeah, there, there is a... You can think yourself into... Uh, into a wonderful recursion of, of paranoia in that regard. That's why, that's why, and, and this is why people think about those who can live without that problem as an asshole, and there is an element to that. There is something to not caring what other people think, so you can behave with confidence. And it, it's a tricky, a tricky line to walk. Because if you are somebody who is really concerned about hurting someone's feelings or, or behaving awkwardly or putting someone in a, in a weird situation. You may act really reserved in social situations. Which means you're not that experienced. Which means you don't have confidence. So, it is all kind of true. In some in some ways. And you, and you kind of... Not you specifically, but the tendency is to perceive those that can act without inhibition as being assholes. Like, oh, they're not being considerate like I am. Except, they're not being inconsiderate. They just been in a situation enough to know the rules. They know how the interactions go. Because they're not socially awkward. Like I have been for a long time, so. Girls bait guys to get them things? I think nice guys are just looking for someone to call a girlfriend or they're a fuckboy. Yeah, I mean, there was, there was a window too where I just wanted, I wanted the validation of somebody that would let me call them a girlfriend. For sure. I never bought anyone anything because of it. I don't think so. There are times that I did, like, help friends out that were women, but that wasn't... wasn't entirely because... I don't know, that was complicated. But, those those things were always given without any... Uh, sorry, I'm just looking at the reflections on this onion. It's actually really impressive. Uh, those things were given without any strings attached. It was just like, hey, I'm giving you this, don't worry about anything. Nice guys who generalize women as they only want X fail to compute the reality that it's okay that woman and I clearly have different preferences and aren't compatible, so it would never work out. Yeah, that'd be bad. That's another thing. That's another thing. There was a whole class of dude that has never, never not been able to have something they want. Um. Oh shit. What oh, shit this dude with his hair? Nice. Why are you hopping? What are you doing? Oh, I guess he can't walk. He has to hop. I guess that makes sense. Um, and that's another factor to it as well. When I was growing up, there were a lot of things I didn't get. But a lot of it was because either my parents didn't want to buy it for me or something like that. But a lot of the time, if I just tried my hardest, I could figure it out, you know? So if there was a video game that was very hard, I could achieve victory just by grinding away at it. So with that sort of... Conditioning is a hard word, but with that sort of experience largely guiding guiding my thinking and, uh, as to how the world works, it became very difficult for me to accept that there may be something that I want, but I don't get to have it just because I want it. When other... Uh, when it comes to other people, you know? That they have volition, and they can choose 
and that there may be factors in the decision-making process that I'm preventing myself from even seeing because I don't want it to affect my, my self-esteem. Man, so many moons. I used to be the exact way and still am sometimes. Just tell yourself over and over that you don't give a fuck and everyone else can lick your nut and eventually you start to believe it. You don't have to be an asshole, but believe in yourself. Yeah, it's it's tough, right? People can tell you you're you know you're a pretty cool person, but there's always this nag in your mind that's like, well, you can't believe that because of all these reasons. It's a uh, it can be rough. It can be rough to live with that. I see that. I see that over there. I want it, but I don't know how to get it. You have to unlearn it. Yeah. <laughs> Men are furries by default. Oh, never mind. That's what you were saying. Furries are nice guys. Most furries are nice guys. Or rather, the ones I've met have been very nice. I like the furry community because it's like... They know what they're into. As long as people don't come after them, they're just like... Chill. It's like, hey, we're just over here doing our thing. And you know what? One of the things I love most about the furry community... I'm gonna throw this out there. They spend fuckloads of money on, on like fan art and doujinshi and all that shit. Good for them, man. And the and the furry community, more than any other community, I have seen a tolerance to paying for art from talented artists. And I'm down with that. I knew a lot of uh a lot of like burgeoning artists, they paid the rent off of commissions from furries. And they were like, I'm not really into this, but you know what? If somebody wants to pay 200 bucks to see a squirrel get fucked, and that's what they want, that's what they really want in this world, I'll make it for them. And, he, and they'll actually pay money and they won't try and haggle out of it for fucking exposure or whatever the shit. So good job, furries. Good for you. I love furries, everything about them, except for how damn furry they are. <laughs> They're very furry, that's that's true. In my head, I can't justify not giving a fuck what other people think. I know it's benefits, but I'm afraid of potential downsides. If you're acting wrong and you don't care what others think, how are you supposed to get better? No, Austin Blue, you bring up you bring up the catch twenty two of trying to develop confidence. It's tough. The the thing to, I think the thing to embrace, the thing that took me a long time to understand, and this is another, uh, another, like, issue of humility, is confidence comes with experience. And experience doesn't mean fucking chicks. Experience just means interacting with people. The more you interact with people, the more you learn to interpret social cues, the more you interpret tone of voice. There's a whole soft set of skills associated with just being a person. Being in social situations that isn't talked about as a skill. Or maybe it, when I was coming up, it was like, it was kind of talked about, but mostly in terms of being antagonistic to what the things that I enjoyed. It was never properly, I don't think, elocuted to me in a way that I could understand it, which could have been more on my side than more on anyone else's, but. Oh shit. I wanted that visor in the scientist outfit. I, I can barely afford it. Yes. Yes. So I think it's just an issue of... I believe pretty firmly that every person, when they're trying to socialize post-age 12, when sexuality starts to become a thing... Holy shit! It comes with a sweet... Sweet afro. Mad scientist fro. This is the best version of Mario ever. I believe pretty fundamentally that um, a human cannot go through that phase without without some amount of awkwardness, without without imposing on someone or presuming too much, without making inappropriate physical contact of some kind. Yeah, I'm Rick. I invented a hat, Morty. Gosh. That's a whole other deal, by the way. The fucking symptom of, of 
edgy internet dudes believing that they're Rick. Or believing that a, a hyper-intellectual, antisocial dude is their hero. Jeez. It's so, like, fucking... It's so paint-by-numbers sometimes. To massage the egos of the antisocial... Uh... Self-imposed intellectuals. Time to go ruin a McDonald's. Yeah. Where's my sauce? Jesus. Give me my coins. My coins. Yeah, there. It was. It was really fun to do the LXJ reboot or whatever, because basically, basically this version of the version I'm playing of Decker now is a mix between uh, Rick and Guy Fieri, which is the best combination ever. It's a dream come true. My IQ is throbbing. Ugh. It's so weird because... I'm gonna duck out for three seconds, cool. Hello, Nation. That's a pretty cool name. I like that. <sighs> I still haven't gone this... Wow. I've gone every direction but the intended one. Why now, bitch? Holy shit. Cool. Cool. An entirely new, like, control scheme. Destructible cubes! Yes, you might, Cappy. That color? I will do that. Oh my god. They still have giant... giant beanstalks you can climb? That's so awesome. Jesus. It's so weird how old Mario shit can still be in new games and... make sense in context. God damn. Is this where I'm supposed to go? Who cares? There is no supposed does. Recharge so bad? Come on, buddy. Haven't you recharged enough? Maybe give somebody else a chance. Do you guys pronounce it Mario or Mario? I think Mario. I say control of sentient beings without, without their consent, a kind of rape. No, it's, it's happy. It's fun. Even though they do die when you throw your hat on them. Mario is the way God intended. I agree. If you say Mario, you sound like you sound like a mid Midwestern family from the 1980s. I'm really curious about these because I haven't seen what these ships do yet. Well, that's right. There was another one in uh in the desert village that was locked in ice. I can get there now. Okay. Was this like a sunshine style? Ah. Okay. It's all it's all foggy. Very very foggy. Did you already play Assassin's Creed? No, Rico. I tried, but my Uplay account's locked out. I have two-factor fa two authentication on it, and that was tied to a previous phone. So I can't log into my Uplay account, so I can't play Assassin's Creed. Now, I also have it on Xbox, because I, you know, I'm a quintessential gamer. Uh, so I might just download it and start playing it on, playing it on Xbox. But, man, those games tend to look really good on PC, so... Uh... Shit, I don't know where to go. Okay, it's coins, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Could you imagine if they didn't put a trail of coins there? How would you ever find this?
Remember that Bungie game that launched in the middle of all the hood games called Stubbs the Zombie? Was that Bungie? I remember that being Microsoft published, but I didn't know it was Bungie. I've had nothing to but pain with Ascred on 1 and 2, but they went from Steam to Uplay and now they don't accept my CD keys or something. Ugh. Yeah, it sounds like you'd have to uh, spend some quality time with Ubisoft support in that to get that working. This is just the... yeah, it's the original one. Oh, it wasn't Bungie? Okay, no big deal. No big deal. These guys are still waiting. There's only one still working. That sucks for you guys. Okay, hold on. I have to use the bathroom. So I'll be back. How was the 6th one, the London one? Syndicate? I liked Syndicate a lot. It was really close to Batman, though. Especially because there was, like, a grappling hook to let you zip around. Professor Baller, what types of jobs do you have for IG and Funhouse? Uh, I worked in a chicken, a fried chicken restaurant. I worked in a library two different times, shelving books and, you know, cleaning laptops. Uh, worked in a Game GameStop for a long time. Worked in a Staples, a Best Buy. Uh, got a job developing banking software, then life reinsurance software, then doing contracting work for a, like a crowd-funded blogging website, or crowd-sourced blog website. Professional nice guy, yeah. I did kind of perfect the nice guy routine. Um, did contracting writing for all sorts of shit, just whoever would pay. Worked for, like, a Texas A&M uh, donors magazine. Uh, did copywriting for a bunch of websites that wanted to just crank out SEO uh, ad copy. I made Tumblr. Yes, Kickflips. Thank you. I invented Tumblr. Some web dev stuff. Um, spent a stretch as, like, a WordPress plugin developer. Um, people would... People that had WordPress websites would basically, like... Say, hey, I want this functionality, I develop it for them, and then charge them hourly for it. So yeah, I've been doing a lot of stuff. Um, I made Dig, I made Tumblr, I made Reddit, I made Amazon, I made Google, I made Yahoo. Uh, I made Hotmail. Um, not, you know, the rest of it, but just Hotmail. Um, Bing Maps, that was me. So. It's amazing what you can do when you're bored. Alright, I'll be back in a bit. I use a bath. From the run of the mill computer predator. Bestiality, one word. <laughs> he chatted online for more than a week with our decoy and slowly introduced more and more depraved sexual requests. He even says he wants to involve a dog. As soon as the guy said, hey, maybe I'd want to do this, and he wasn't immediately slapped down, it's testing the waters. Was this all talk, or would this man actually walk into our kitchen? That's him coming in the door. How you doing? How you doing? Why don't you have a seat right around that stool, please? What's happening? I'm much. What are you here for? Just coming to talk to him. Coming to talk to who? That's it. Why are you so nervous? I just got nervous. I was coming to talk to Aaron. How old is Aaron? <laughs> she didn't tell me. Try again. <laughs> I saw I saw 14. So you thought it was okay to come here to see a 14-year-old girl? No, I didn't. And you say, would you ever try anal? Ouch, that's like it could hurt. Not if done right. You have to be very gentle with that. Quite a Romeo. I'm, I'm a lonely guy. What can I say? He's more than just a lonely guy. We did a background check on VA mail, and it turns out his real name is Joe Wunderler, an Army sergeant stationed at Fort Belvoir at the Intelligence and Security Command. I've never done anything. I'm trying to get help with it. What are you doing to get help? I'm seeing a, a psychiatrist right now. Well, it doesn't look like it's working too well based upon all this. I just started talking to him. I mean, this gets pretty freaky here. You talk about sex acts with a dog. It's one of the reasons why I'm trying to get help because I've gotten into fetishes that I, that I know aren't right. 
I guess you're going to tell me next that this is the very first time you've done something like this. Actually, it is. I'm serious. True or not, remember, this guy tried to entice a young teen into depraved sex acts. It only takes one encounter to harm a child forever. We set aside three days to see how many men would actually show up at our undercover house. To keep track of our appointments, we set up a bulletin board. It didn't take long to fill up our calendar. Total today? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten so far. Some came bearing gifts like beer, condoms, and a pornographic tape. One man brought shoes and dinner just what the decoy ordered. You may not think that's significant, but Lieutenant Jake Jacoby, who runs a child services unit here in Virginia, says during undercover stings, it can help get convictions. At times when they show up, um, we like to have them either bring us something or do something so we can show that, that they're doing specifically what we asked them to do. Shows intent. It helps, yes. The men who show up at this house looking for a liaison with a child come from very different backgrounds. And as our investigation unfolds, you might be surprised at just how diverse our group gets. Some hold very prominent positions, more prominent than you'd ever imagine. What do you do for a living? brings a cool cat like you to this side of the sea. Whoa, this totally awesome way. Oh, 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 oh. oh, now I need a really rad breakfast to help get me back home. Then follow your nose. To fruit flavor it goes. Smell the natural orange, lemon, and cherry flavors of Kellogg's Fruit Loops. Most tubular. The most delicious part of this complete breakfast. Mm, fruit Loops are excellent. Another bowl? Hey, that'd be gnarly, dude. That means yes, doesn't it? What? What does he do for a living? Sorry, guys. <sighs> Sometimes we don't get all the answers in life. Sometimes you don't get to choose. Oh man, it's another Goomba stack. Oh, and Lady Goomba. Okay. Okay, I think I, I got this. I got it figured out. Downloaded. You got to start with the biggest, the biggest Goomba stack. Ha! And then you can use this to jump on the smaller ones. Yep. 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 Ah! There we go. What is player 2 controlling this? Uh, controls Cappy. And I'm not exactly sure how that works out. To be frank. Yeah. That's true love right there. See? Ladies are lonely too sometimes. Just gotta be a nice Goomba. Why do girl Goombas always date the asshole Goombas? Alright. Okay. That's kinda cool. I see the small back there. You gotta knock out all the stuff so you can climb up. Mario just a pawn of the hat? You're starting to ask the right questions. Okay, okay. Hmm. I think that's probably good enough. I can just wall jump my way up. Maybe. Staircase over here. There we go. I don't to do it. Ah, never summer. Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Twitch was lying to you when it said live. What do you mean? I'm still live, as far as I know. If I saw a convention, you could call it Full House. Yeah. We are. We're already using that. That particular wordplay, though. We have a quote-unquote show called Full House where we just upload unedited 
game streams. Oop. Oh, you were delayed by like four minutes? That's weird. Well, I've been live for a while, so... Sorry to hear that Twitch is being unreliable for you. Aha! It's just a normal heart. Yeah, Colin, I'm really excited for the, the World Cup as well. I am especially excited excited that by virtue of Stephanie working at Blizzard, I was able to get get a pass to BlizzCon. Which means I think I'll get to to go and watch live. Which I'm super amped about. Watching watching eSports stuff live, especially for games that I, I really care about, is a really great experience. Some of those some of that stuff makes me realize, oh okay. Yeah, all the people who are watching sports and stuff, they were kind of onto something. And yes, for donuts, this music is fantastic. Man, it's great. Aw, oh, there we go. That's a one-two, one-two vibe. Oh. Shit. I'm only guessing there are Goombas here because I have to stack them. Okay. I'm pretty sure I can collect the two just by jumping. I wonder if people still care about WoW? People still play it? <clears throat> yeah. Well, WoW's pretty stable. It's it's weird. There have been, like, stories about it declining or whatever. It's still, as far as I know, it's still the, the world's number one MMO. I think Funhouse should do more behind the vlog style things, but it just edited footage of Bruce going to Senko and Chipotle. I'll wait for my check. The thing is, it would have to be heavily edited. Uh, because the the style you're referring to is basically the Sugar Pine vlog, which is intensely edited. It's um, it's all you know. That's all about constructing narratives where there may not be one. So that only happens when you have a pretty heavy hand in the edit process, and you go in knowing that you want to take it in a certain direction. Should I have kept the the Goomba stack? I don't know. Maybe. Wait, what, what was up there? Ah! Or I'll just fall off and die. I know people complain that WoW is a shit show because Jeff left the dev team of it. Oh, I didn't know that. He's he's actually a pretty good, like, public face of a game. He knows how to talk to his audience. Which is... Seems like it's becoming more and more imperative for game devs to, to know that skill. I know this gets thrown a lot, a lot, but they legitimately made the new Seinfeld. Nothing happens, nothing matters, and there's always something to talk about. Yeah. Cyborg, that's a really, really great... Really great summary of that, that style. Oh. Okay. So I guess this is how you get those... Yeah. I get dim nuts. No, that, that is actually a really good point of comparison with, with their vlog format. I didn't think about that, but... You are correct. Man, this game's really pretty. Cool. Never thought I'd hear an 808 in a Mario game. Yeah, that's a really, like, farty synth, right? It's good, though. <laughs> 11 is terrible now. Really? I played 11 back when it launched and that was that was some real shit. That felt like early Ultima Online days to me. Just like trying to survive this brutal world. That shit was brutal as fuck. I still like it though. 14 is my shit now though. It's 2.30 time to flip on that vaporwave. Yeah, here, I'll leave this to you guys. Because I'm feeling I'm feeling spicy tonight. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be streaming, but... Um, 
You guys can let me know. Oop. Oh, shit. Ah, oh, I fucked it up. I fucked it up. Save me. What has science done? Um, I'll leave it to you guys. Do you want me to just roll random clips for a while? Because I can do that. Maybe that can be a thing. Maybe that's what distinguishes my channel. It's not like viewership goes up during those sequences, so I think it only works for some people. But I've always wanted just like a random media roulette thing to just run in the background. To me, that is that is the 100% perfect uh, background noise. You like the random clips? Yeah. OBS is OBS updated recently with some some features that make that a lot more viable. Ow! Fuck. It doesn't require a, a whole lot of uh, manual curation for me anymore. Like running the background while chatting or pure video? No, I, I wouldn't be talking over it. Um, it would just be running. Perfect background noises ruins the next generation. Yeah, I, I hear ya. For me, um, man, G4 was a blessing. Uh, when it was around, when it was around, because that's when World of Warcraft was out. So I uh, I remember playing a lot of World of Warcraft to uh, Attack of the Show X play. All all of like the uh, basically the the downslope of G4, but it was it was perfect background noise for intense intense early or mid 2000s video games. Fucking passions is pretty good background noise too. Yeah, Scode. So, yeah, I've sometimes put like text overlays and stuff. I've thought, uh, I have I have dreams about doing like DJ sets to that stuff, of setting up some. I need a stream deck for it, but like setting up a playlist. Basically, I also need audio software to crossfade tracks. That shouldn't be hard to find. I'm sure it's free. I just haven't done the the googling and the evaluation of the software. But I, I've had dreams about putting on like a, like weekly, finding the tracks I like, making a one and a half hour playlist, just playing a DJ set. Nothing nothing more complicated than just beat matching tracks and having a, a playthrough, a 90 minute set list. And then just putting on um, game clips and stuff against it, overlays and cool shit. Yeah, see, Striker, I always love Cinematech. Um, I've always loved that. And I felt like there was, there was a stroke of brilliance to it. I, mean, I think I'd like to uh, to capitalize on that, but basically that is that is what drives a lot of the the random clip stuff, the, the Cinematech format. Just random random shit that you can either assume or imply validity to. I probably shouldn't have gotten out of the tank. Doesn't Spotify have an auto crossfade track? If it does, I I don't know because uh, I don't use Spotify. But it sounds like a thing Spotify might have. Whoops. I do like that they give you a chance to get back in the tank. That's nice of them. I just didn't think I could hit peace switches without being as Mario. get all those bolts. The tank Mario is so interesting and weird. It is interesting that, that this game kind of revolves around Mario becoming a lot of different things. Okay, they're giving me another one. All right. Good, good. I feel like that's slight homage to the original Mario Brothers. No, it's um, it's just going to be an issue of like me getting the MP3s and then finding a. So cross crossfade is not the same as beat matching and making a playlist. Um, a proper DJ never drops the beat. The beat goes on and on to the break of dawn. You know, 
So it's it's not really about just crossfading one track into another. It's about finding musical transitions to speed up or slow down the BPM, or using musical effects to mask the transition of BPM, so that it doesn't disrupt the party vibe. I mean, it's it's just something people feel on a on a DNA level. If you uh, if you're chatting with somebody and you hear this weird like crossbeat happening, you like look around for a little bit. It's disruptive. A good DJ will make sure that his playlist is a smooth transition of, of BPMs and smooth transition of beats. I used to use Amazon Music a lot, actually. I really liked it. And then, for me, Google Play was just a little bit better. It had a couple of features that... It had this, some of the features that Spotify did not have, like uploading your own music and stuff like that. It had a better library and was a little more reliable uh, than... Fuck, do you get up there? It was a little more reliable than Amazon. And since I was already buying into YouTube Red, it was free! So, quote unquote free. It was included with the cost. God, these bongos, though. Oh! Is the music changer in the tank? I think it changes for this this point in the game. Oh, it's just that encounter. See, like the bongos are gone. That's actually a really cool picture. Oh, I wish I had snapped that in time. Ah, well. Yeah, I want to start experimenting with uh, with movie clips uh, on the channel too. So one of the one of the things that's sort of, for better or worse, mostly worse, but uh, I was hoping breaking that stuff would do something. Hello, Bernie Lomax. Um, thank you for the cheer. But yeah, with, with demonetization rolling through YouTube, just ripping through it, I was kind of hoping, or rather, it has occurred to me that maintaining eligible monetization on YouTube doesn't mean anything, because my videos will just be not advertiser friendly anyway. So then I'm like, well fuck it, why should I care about getting why should I care about getting copyright claims? I can use whatever I want. Eighteen people can claim the video and I don't give a shit because it wasn't advertiser friendly in the first place. I think it means that they get the YouTube Red revenue, but whatever. There wasn't a whole lot of that to begin with. So, from my perspective, it's like, cool, I guess I get to use copywritten music, copywritten video clips. And it's it's definitely not a situation of, like, I want to steal other people's stuff. It's more like that there are holding companies that buy the rights to a lot of bullshit and then monetize it on YouTube because that's how they make money. So I don't have a whole lot of, uh, don't have a whole lot of love loss for them. Eh? Oh. Which means that in the past I was like, you know what, if you bought the rights and you want to claim it, Fine, I'll avoid using your clip. And then eventually, essentially what I would do is, for every video I uploaded to YouTube, I would, uh, if it got claimed by somebody, I'd remove that clip from my rotation so it didn't happen in the future. But now, once it is getting claimed, I'm just like, I don't care. Here's a YouTube comment I just read. I find her body very attractive and I almost want to jack off, but her face is appearing just like my sister, and it is so unjerkable to me. Uh. Cool. Oh man, this this fucking bass track already. I love it when dudes can't think past their their desire to jerk it 
to, like, fucking masturbate to whatever they can find. I think my favorite thing that dudes do is think that it's a compliment to anybody that they would masturbate to them. Milady, I have chosen to jerk off thinking about you tonight. Surely you must be... So humbled. So humbled that I have chosen to think about you while I pull up my belly folds and rub my small pasty dick to you. You know what? Yes, dude, yes. That is that is the one thing any person would would die happy knowing. That sounds disturbing? Yeah, it ought to be. My favorite is just like reading reading forum posts from dudes who will be like, I wouldn't jack off to that. Huh. It's like good. That person doesn't want you to. Oh shit, I fucked myself. Oh, I got a flop. I got a heart out of it, so. Uh, that's an interesting mechanic. Man. It's crazy that everything you capture has its own movement mechanic? Jeez. Tonight I come in your honor. Milady. I have jacked it to many fine females in the past. I just want you to know that tonight is a special night. Tonight. Tonight I will be kneeling over the toilet and jacking it in your honor. If you would like to perhaps make for me a laurel of flowers to wear atop my brow to honor the seed that I have sprayed in your honor, then I will wear it and I will accept it. Kneeling over the toilet, yeah. That's one technique. The other one is to like, you gotta like throw, you gotta throw a leg up on on the side of the toilet, you know. Get a knee up, so it's all like it's all classy style. Just tenderly, tenderly and sensually, cranking it out in the bathroom, thinking about the lass on the internet, the cosplay photo that you found just so stimulating. Oh, milady, your Black Widow cosplay has inspired such passions in me that when I jack off the third time tonight, I will throw my heel up on the cistern of my toilet and massage myself to you. Oh, milady, is there any greater honor? <laughs> Masid? Do you have the Black Widow cosplay? Print it out? I suppose, yeah. Tape it to the... Tape it to the linen closet. Young boy, I'm good at this because I lived this. I ain't no fake gamer boy. Oh, New Donk City. Take me down to New Donk City. Alright. I'm gonna I'm gonna plant terra firma in New Donk, and then I think I'll I'll wrap up the stream. You have some bizarre ability to describe beating off the most eloquent way possible, because it's it's a miracle. Every time a dude jacks off in a bathroom, it's a miracle. Have you ever cosplayed? Yes. Would you? Yes. Interestingly enough, in loose relation to this conversation point, I recently started literally asking permission to touch to women at bars. When things are getting interesting, just because I feel like consent should be more forthcoming. I'd rather beat a weird nerd than a creeper. Yeah. It's tough. There, There is... There is an excitement to non-spoken communication. Uh, there is something that is... I'm gonna fuck... Like, there's something hot about people that just fall into a groove together. And you don't have to say, this is okay... They just do it, and you're okay with it. But that gets dangerous, right? Like, those cues, those nonverbal cues are... scary, if they're assumed. So, yes, getting verbal confirmation is ideal. But I also think if you... I think if you... 
understand someone enough. If you're comfortable enough to someone. Non-spoken communication. It exists, man. I'm not saying, like, just jump on someone because you want to. But... There is something to body language. There is something to the way someone looks at you. There, there is something to that. Non-verbal as shit. Yeah. I think you can never go wrong asking. And you can definitely go wrong not asking. I gotta make this as you gotta ask permission to look at a girl, even if it is a glance. Hmm. Shit. Oh, I see. Yeah, Kilo. Okay. You're absolutely right. Not saying it doesn't exist, saying you need social skills to pick up on it. That is absolutely true. I will say, if there's any doubt in your mind, then speak. Rely on spoken uh, communication. But if you honestly feel, and not like, don't let the fact that you want to get laid factor into it, but if you honestly feel like you understand the cues enough, I think then and only then, but... I still think there are ways to feel that that situation out verbally. I still think that you can... Like, let... I don't know. There's way... There's ways. There's ways if you're looking for, for validation, or you're looking for confirmation. So let's say you, you're getting the doe eyes, or you think you are. You're getting the hair touch, you're getting the, like, turning in, you're... <laughs> just ask her, may you receive fuck? Yeah. There's ways to do that. You can talk about it, and, I don't know, again, a bunch of nonverbal stuff. It's all nonverbal, essentially. May Nelson need to stop staring so much in public, it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, there are guys that think their attention by itself is complimentary. And that's kind of a, a lighter version of... He's got a punch hat. Alright, whatever. That's a lighter version of... Milady, I am... I am... Cranking my seat out to you tonight. Guys think that... All a woman wants is to just get glared at by some creepy dude. Oh, now I got your hat. She's coming for you, Bowser. Look at his hair! It's all combed over. Let's see here. You could suggest moving to somewhere more private, and then that response is pretty indicative. Kilo, exactly. Yes, that that's what I mean. It's for me. The thing that took me a long time to learn was the the dynamic between providing options and then being truly receptive to how those options are received. So a a less a less aggressive version of that was like, you see girls, she's cute. You guys are talking and you kinda kinda seem to hit it off. A version of the technique is or rather the goal should be giving giving someone the option to increase their investment with you without the obligation to do so. Or the societal pressure to do so. So it's like, hey, you know what we're hitting off? Do you want to just go somewhere, you and me? Somewhere public, so there's no, like, there's no overtones. Just a place where we can talk for a while. And again, the reaction tells you everything. If it's like, oh, I've got homework to do, all right. Maybe you actually have homework to do. Maybe you don't. Doesn't matter. But, I'm not gonna press this, because I've got no dog in this fight. If you have homework, go do it. If you don't have homework and you want it out, that's fine too. But it's just... Yeah, it's it's receiving... Receiving the signals that a lot of dudes are unwilling to do. Because... They want to they wanna grab that titty. He looks so nice in his little suit. His suit even has a little pattern on it. Oh. Bowser's not the good boy, but look at his hair! Look at his beautiful hair! His little Bowser comb over. Anyway, I'm no expert. I don't know why I... I don't know why I fucking lecture about this shit. Mostly it's me just working through my own... 
my own insecurities and my own confusion about the process. She has a bouquet of death flowers, yeah, piranha plants. Man. Bowser's the real alpha here. See, I don't know. Between Bowser and between Mario, who would you rather marry at this point? Bowser's got a flying ship. He's got some nice hair. He got a tuxedo. Mario's a little bitch. What you drinking? Just water at this point. I've, I've emptied out my cr crack cola, crack up cola and vodka. But uh, Bowser has a has a good dick. It's all spark. It's all spiky though. More moons. Well, if I know anything about Mario Galaxy, it's that moon solves everything. Oh my god, why? Hear this, hear this sound, though. Shit. Sound design? Man, that's good. Here's the thing, says Anime Buddharama. Uh, what's the least offensive physical touch to move through a crowd of people during other con concerts or other loud situations? I normally do a light open palm on the mid-lower back, like a light touch saying, Hey, I need to get past you. Only when someone has been offended, so I feel it works. I also wonder if some people just don't want to say something. It's non-sexual. I tend to do it to men more, being a man myself, but I don't know crowd wolves. Uh, I would say that's a little... That's a little... That is kind of a little disarming. Um... I just, I just tap the shoulder, just like, just four fingers on the shoulder, like the side of the arm, like, excuse me, and then people turn. I think, I think the small of the back is actually a pretty vulnerable place for most people. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go right to that. Yeah, yeah, kickflips. Mid, mid lower back makes your skin crawl. That's like where a dude touches you if he's on a date with you and he's guiding you somewhere. I, I, I would say shoulder or like arm, something that's like very out, something that's very exposed. I'm not saying that you did you're like wrong in doing it that way, by the way. Smell the back make my pee pee hard. Please don't touch my back. Yeah. I would say shoulder. Probably probably the most exposed, most touchable part of a person. Um There's there's also an art to sort of just visibly entering somebody's eye space so they move out of the way and you don't even have to touch them. There's a whole art to sort of like raising your arm and like angling it into a situation. Like, let's say you have a drink and you're holding it by the top, you can just kind of, like, not be a dick about it. Like, not just shove into somebody's eye, like, right in front of their face, but just make yourself visible. Like, enter somebody's periphery. Try to make eye contact with them. There's ways to, like... There's ways to get somebody to move out of the way that don't even involve touch. The thing is, usually when you move past them, especially if it's a crowded concert, you will have to brush against them or something like that. That's kind of expected. But, yeah... I don't know, the lower back is kind of, I would say, a more sensual touch than just trying to get someone's attention. That's what I would say. Then again, I'm a, I'm a fucking shutted, man. It's Saturday. I went outside once today and it was to eat a chicken fried steak. And I've been inside everyone ever since. I dressed Mario up like Rick. Going to assassin style? Yeah, just, just hands shooting out everywhere, touching everything. Touching the bus. The butthole also works good. Not sexual after all. Anal is against God, and we would never do that. This is really pretty. I love how every... It is it is kind of similar to Galaxy in that every level is sort of suspended in, in nowhere, and in nothingness. Anyway. Okay, I think I'm done streaming for tonight. Play more video games, watch some speed runnings. Uh... Yeah, we'll see. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, I'm going to stream more tomorrow. As it's Sunday. That's my thing. So, if you want to tune in then, you can. But thank you for watching tonight. Um, Twitch behaved mostly, which is nice. Everything's settling out. Cool. Uh, so, yeah. I think I'll, uh, I'll leave the clips going for a while. I don't know if it's in violation of Twitch guidelines or not. So I read it. It's in violation of some of them, but not in others. Namely, it's not interactive. And that's kind of the thing that makes me wonder. Ah, maybe I shouldn't. 
What's planned for tomorrow? Well, maybe I can get my Uplay account straightened out, but if not, I'll, I'll figure it out. There's so many games to play. And I also have... I, I'm so far behind. Like, even in Final Fantasy XIV. I haven't even finished the story quest, and they put out a patch, and it's a Halloween event. So there's a lot of anime to do. You know, there's just so much to play. It's great. But yeah, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to let the clips go too long, because uh, there's, like I said, there's some other cosplay, or, uh, there's some other speedrun events I want I want to watch. I want to check out NASA, and then Best of NASA is still going, so. Uh, why do you s switch between here and YouTube? Donuts, sometimes Twitch. I can't stream to Twitch effectively. So I, I think it has, it's related to the internet congestion in my area. I think that, um, I think it's just that uh, in my area or in my apartment complex, enough people watch Netflix at night that it makes it difficult to stream to Twitch. So on those nights, streaming to YouTube is much easier. I don't know why. Um, and then on week weekends, when I can stream in the middle of the day, when people aren't necessarily at home downloading or watching streaming video, it gets easier to stream to Twitch. So that's why I switch. Anyway, thanks everybody for watching. Really appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Mario's great. Remember that. Playing Kellogg's Fruit Loops. It's the truth. Your principal can't smile, can't swim, can't run, and I can't stand bubble tape. Your school bus driver can't drive. Where's Curler? Makes funny noises. Won't try bubble tape. No way, Jose. It's six feet of bubble gum for you, not them. So you like him? Yeah. You like him, like him? Yeah, but I'm sure he thinks I'm a geek. She must think I'm a total nerd. Every time I see her, she just ignores me. <laughs> He's got this hair that kind of goes bloop. <laughs> so do you like her? She's okay, I guess. Yeah, you like her. When I'm around her, I just don't know what to say. Oh, look who's here. Hi. <laughs> see? I told you she didn't like me. <laughs> is he gone yet? <laughs> Every day is like a Christmas party trip. Down. Come on to the trip. Crackle motion. It's the sparkling blue place that falls in a commotion. Now. Come on to the trip. Crackle motion. You put it on your brush and move it all around. It's got a blue day. Move it up and down. And now. Now available in a clear tube. Put down that joystick and get ready to ride. It's the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. I'm Mario. My brother Luigi and I are hot. Watch us take on the baddest bad guy in town, King Koopa. He's got his hooks out for Princess Toadstool. But we're gonna stop him cold. The Super Mario Brothers Super Show. It's awesome. Super Mario, tomorrow at 7. Troubles brewing in Gotham City. It's Batman, ain't it? Louise, it's a woman. A vigilante is wreaking havoc on the Dark Knight's turf. <laughs> but she's bitten off more than she can chew. Can Batman discover her true identity before it's too late? Who are you? Mystery of the Batwoman. Next Saturday night at 7.30. Dark Knight Square. Got a check. Only Toonami. Blossom. Bubbles. Buttercup. Three superheroes with an attitude. And a curfew. And just where have you three been? We were out fighting crime. The Powerpuff Girls, weekdays 5.30. Then check them out in surround sound. And our name in life. We were hit before it hit the school. Every Friday at 5, Toonami's breaking off movies for the masses. This Friday, the cutest superhero team in the world is back. And there's gonna be some trouble. Okay, let's play. Can I put it but are they ready for non-stop monkey mayhem and madness? I'm into this gorilla warfare. The Powerpuff Girls movie, this Friday at 5, still saving the world before bedtime. Be there. Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. And that's just the 
tip of the iceberg. Wait, he's very fast. Yeah. The world's greatest team of heroes has finally come home. Home sweet home. Tsunami presents Justice League, premiering Monday, June 2nd at 5. Not so fast. All them heroes is in the house. Just watch. <laughs> It's more amazing than Reptile Boy found in Swamp. More incredible than Bigfoot Mary's Hollywood star. It's Super Mario All-Stars is free. I want to know how. Just get the Super NES Super Set, and for $3.50 postage and handling, you can send for a free Mario All-Stars game. I did it. Now look at me. Four Marios in one, delivered straight to your house by Alien Postman. You'll play every Mario Brothers made. Retouched photos prove it's true. Hurry, pick up your copy today. Super Mario All-Stars is free. You'll love it. Extra! Fight! One! Ready! Go! In.
Fight! One! Ready! Go! Fight two. Ready, go! 